Now we want to look at some application problems. I uh, know with application problems, you need to you know, be able to read it, understand what's going on, um, define your variable. What are we looking for? Well, in this problem, it says the sum of 4 and 5 times the square of a number is equal to negative 12 times the same number. What are the possible numbers? So we're looking for the numbers, and so we can define that to be this. So let x equal the number. This is the guy that we're looking for. Okay. Now, as you read this, it tells you exactly how to set things up. Uh, one of the first things you do want to see is this. The is equal to tells you where your equal sign is going to go. So before the equal sign, we see this. The sum of 4 and 5 times the square of a number. The first math word that I see is sum. And when you see a word like sum, difference, product, and quotient, you want to look for the word and, and that's where that will go. I see the word and here, which is tied to the word sum, so that's where my plus goes. Well, what are the two things that I'm adding? Well, before I see the word and, I see the number 4, so I can write 4. After that is the expression 5 times the square of a number. So that just means 5 times the square of a number. Well, to say the square of a number is just going to be x squared. And I've got the equal to part. And this is going to equal negative 12 times the same number. So that means negative 12 times the same number. So the, the number we've already mentioned before is just x. That's the missing number, the unknown number. It's what we're looking for. Now, notice this is a quadratic equation. So that means I need to get everything to one side and when I do that, I also want to make sure that my terms are written in descending order. So when I do that, I have 5x squared. This comes over as a positive 12x. There's my plus 4, and then this equals 0. We have a lot of different ways of trying to solve this equation. One of the first things you want to look for is SRP, the square root property. Is this set up so that we can use the square root property? That means, do I have my variable contained inside of a square? Well, this variable is a square, but I also have x as well, and that, that doesn't bode well for me. They have to all be contained within the square, so that doesn't apply. Next, I say WTF, will this factor? Factoring is one of the easiest things to do if you know how to do it, and it often gives you the answer very quickly, again, if things do factor. Well, let's see if this guy factors. It's a trinomial with no common factor other than 1. 5 is prime, so I know the only way to break down 5x squared is 5x and x. Everything here is positive, so that means two positives. Look at the factors for 4. The factors for 4 are 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. As we've seen before, these guys have a common factor of 2, and you want to see does 2 go into 12? Since 2 does go into 12, I should use those factors. So let's see if this works out. I mean, it may not work out. I, you never know. Uh, so I get 2x here, and I multiply it here, and I get 10x. So 10 plus 2 is going to give me the 12x I'm looking for. So using the zero factor theorem, I finish this guy. Solving for x, I get negative 2 fifths by subtracting the 2, dividing by 5. My other solution is x equals negative 2. So those are my solutions. And there's no real world problem that I have to really think about and concern myself with. Like, can I have positives? Can I have negatives? It doesn't really matter. These guys are both just numbers. So we state our answer now. And we just say that the numbers are negative 2 fifths and negative 2.